Hi, I'm Larry Johnson. I am a professor at Texas A&M University, and today we're going to talk about transport, endocytosis, and phagocytosis. This is how things get through uh, the cell membrane. Uh, either it could be secretions, uh, it could be bacteria being phagocytized, uh, it could be um, electrolytes, uh, it, it could be um, oxygen and carbon dioxide, different components that need to get into the cell and need to get out of the cell. Thank you. So if we look at the cell membrane, it's about uh, 8 to uh, 10 nanometers in thickness, and you can see the thickness here from, from the inside to the outside. It's a trilameter structure. Uh, it has um, polar ends on either side and then a hydrophobic area uh, in the center as we see here, uh, lipid bilayers uh, uh, there, proteins projecting up into there, and then sugars on the surface, and those sugars we can see as uh, the glycocalyx coat that surrounds the cell, that surrounds the cell membrane. Here we see actin filaments. We can see a longitudinal view of, of actin filaments as they project the plasma membrane up uh, uh, to amplify the surface area uh, of the cells. Here we see uh, the staining, PAS staining, uh, which stains for carbohydrates. So we can see uh, this, uh, uh, the sugars on the brush border along through there. We can also see sugars in goblet cells uh, as well. So the sugars that we see, PAS positive, on light microscopy are really uh, the sugars that are attached to the proteins on the surface, uh, and that's what helps make the glycocalyx coat that we see on the outside of cells. Now, a cell membrane is necessary for life. Uh, it marks the limit uh, of the uh, cell. It defines the cell. What's on the outside of a cell membrane is outside the cell. It also separates the cell from its environment. Um, it cannot lock out all things. Some things must pass uh, through the membrane. So you have a cell membrane that marks the limit of a cell, but it has to allow some things to go inside. And there's four classes of things that must pass. Uh, one is the nutrients. Nutrients in, we got amino acids, uh, oxygen, fatty acids, carbohydrates, etc., has to get in. If nutrients come in, waste has to come out. The CO2, the products of metabolism, uh, have to come out of the membrane. Also, inflammational molecules are necessary to go through the cell uh, plasma membrane, cell membrane, or, or uh, at least wise, uh, uh, indicate something through the membrane, to get the message through. Hormones, growth, uh, uh, factors or chemotactic factors uh, must go through to alert the cell for activity it should do. Uh, also cell products like secretions must go through, bacteria must go through for phagocytic cells. Also red blood cells, there's about 250 billion cells per day uh, that are destroyed, red blood cells produced and destroyed, uh, that must be uh, phagocytized. So of the cell membrane, it contains antigens on the surface, and here we can see the different blood types that are there. It's the cell, it's the recognition of things. Also, it has a series of pumps, the pumps, uh, ATP uh, uh, driven pumps uh, that go through there, or maybe it's a channel through there, or maybe it's protein is uh, attached to the uh, glycocalyx on the outside. Uh, also, it may have receptors, and receptors to, recept to receive the informational molecules, and then from there, a mechanism by which it gets the message to the inside of the cell, changes the psychic AMP uh, to stimulate the cell to do something, uh, some physiologic response 
due to stimuli uh, that it received uh, from the inflammation molecule. So here we see the uh, cell membrane around through there with proteins on the surface. Uh, those proteins migrate to a certain, and then they may endocytose, and then you have actually vesicles on the inside. So what was on the outside is now on the inside. And you can have reverse. You can have exocytosis, that is what goes in and goes out. Uh, what's inside here goes out through there, and that's what we have here in this goblet cell. We see the nucleus, we see the secretions, and the secretions here. We can see a cell that is literally discharging uh, its granules here. There's this nucleus there, nucleus. So this is one cell, another cell, brush mortar up through there. So if we revisit uh, uh, the membrane, you can see some things can come right through. Uh, uh, oxygen, uh, carbon dioxide can go through with anywhere in a membrane it could go through free of charge. Uh, water, uh, urea, uh, glycerol can go through. Water may go through little channels. Uh, other things can't go through. Glucose, we need it, but you can't go through. Ions, we need it, but it can't go through. And so we have to come up with some mechanism to get those things through. And one way is simple diffusion, and that's what we have here. Whatever's there, gonna go over to there. Uh, and that's thing when things can cross freely. And then we have uh, passive facilitated uh, diffusion and then also active transport. Active transport is against its concentration gradient. Uh, these other things always go from a high concentration to a low concentration. So if we look at a plasma membrane, uh, we can see a series of proteins. Some of them may be a ping pong thing, a carrier. Uh, some of it may be a channel that will allow uh, aqueous things to go through uh, uh, the phospholipid uh, bilayer. And these proteins, of course, are part of fluid mosaic model where the proteins kind of like an uh, um, proteins in the sea of fat is what we see. Now there are different kinds of channels. There are some channels that go in by themselves uh, uh, and through uh, down a concentration gradient, we call that uniport. Uh, and then also there's others that go together, we call it a symport. Or sometimes when one goes in and one goes out, we call it an antiport. Some of the ports also have uh, some kind of binding site. So some uh, hormone or signal or inflammational molecule uh, will stimulate uh, the opening of, of the channel uh, itself. So these some of these channels are gated, so they open and close depending upon uh, stimulation or, or what's outside it. And so if we look at a, a cell here, we can see simple diffusion. Uh, this is what would happen with uh, oxygen and, and uh, CO2, uh, nitrogen, uh, where things could just go through and it could go anywhere through here. Simple diffusion. And down is concentration gradient. Go from a higher concentration to a lower concentration. Uh, and then there's also a channel mediated diffusion. Uh, this is passive transport, facilitated diffusion, you might say. Again, going down is concentration gradient. And this may be a carrier protein. Again, uh, it is uh, passive uh, transport. And it goes down the concentration grade. It goes from higher concentration to a lower concentration. However, uh, active transport can go against this concentration gradient, uh, but it requires ATP. So some of the things that's important to go through, uh, uh, you, you'll go against a concentration gradient if you want to. And here's a graph uh, showing you the concentration of things uh, uh, on one side versus uh, the rate of transport uh, through the, the membrane. And here's simple diffusion. So the more things you have here, the more you're gonna have out there. Now, if you have a carrier mediated diffusion, <coughs> a protein there, then you usually have a higher affinity for it, namely that a lower concentration gets more in. Uh, uh, if you have a carrier, but it's saturable. And so you have a high affinity, but uh, you have a limited number. So the more you put over there, you won't get more because you don't have uh, more proteins in the membrane to facilitate to occur. Here we see where the, how the ping pong protein might work, where you get in here once its uh, cargo is loaded, uh, it flips to the other side, causes a current. Confirmation of change and, and then it releases its cargo down its concentration gradient, ping pong. 
Um, here we see sodium down its concentration gradient uh, through there, uh, but here we have an uh, antiport uh, where we use uh, ATP. We actually phosphorylate uh, the protein from the AT, uh, ATP to ADP, uh, and so that brings uh, three sodiums uh, out of the cell, and it brings in two potassiums into the cell. And we can see uh, how that channel works. Uh, sodium binds. Uh, uh, this is a, a cytosol uh, in through here. Sodium uh, binds uh, there. And then you get uh, ATP converted to ADP, and you phosphorylate the protein. That causes a conformational change. Uh, when it uh, changes, then all of a sudden the sodium that was inside now can go uh, outside uh, the cell and that also frees up the binding site for potassium. Potassium binds there. Uh, phosphate is dephosphorylated. When it's dephosphorylated to get a conformation change back and then whenever it flips back in through there and uh, remove the phosphate, uh, then uh, you have the sodium binding site available now and also the potassium can come uh, comes on to the inside. So you actually phosphorylate, use ATP to phosphorylate the protein to cause a change. Uh, uh, also the change occurs when you remove the phosphate from that. So basically, uh, here's where we see, so if this is extracellular matrix, this is a cytoplasm inside the cell, you're pumping sodium out so that there will be more sodium on the outside than the inside. So sodium could be used uh, in this port, SIM port, uh, to bring glucose in. So in order to bring glucose in, you have to use sodium, but then you need to pump it out at a different location so it's going against the concentration gradient. And we see that right here in a test absorptive cell where we have sodium pumps in the basal lateral border uh, and then you have the SIM port for the glucose to come in uh, at the apical border. And so uh, basically as we see that, so we have a SIM port there and a, and a uniport down here. So this is a uniport uh, where it actually glucose is coming down its concentration gradient to get out of the cell. But to get into the cell, uh, uh, it needs to uh, come in with, uh, with sodium in the SIM port, uh, and the antiport would be where uh, you're bringing potassium inside the cell and you're taking sodium out of the cell. So exocytosis is a release of secretory products into the extracellular matrix, and that's what we said occurs here by, by default. Uh, it occurs. Also, we have uh, exocytosis of a secretory granule uh, that some signal has uh, mediated. So membrane-bound uh, granules move to the surface. Uh, some of the proteins stay in the membrane, in, in the plasma membrane, cell membrane, and then the other cargo uh, is discharged. So they fuse with the plasma membrane, and then the com uh, components become extra uh, extracellular invaginations uh, remove excess membrane uh, from the uh, from the surface uh, as well. Minute vesicles, uh, penicillosis actually is tasting the environment. Cells constantly do that, and so here we see the cell membrane in three uh, displays. Uh, we see uh, the exocytosis, where whatever's inside, you get the fusion of the of the vesicle membrane. Uh, with the, the cell membrane and the contents of discharge. Endocytosis is just the opposite, where you take things from an extracellular matrix, come here, pinch that off, and now you got uh, it inside of a vesicle below. The other option is budding. Uh, and here we can see where the contents, uh, instead of uh, the contents of a, of a cell, is actually inside uh, like a little version of a cell. It's a cell membrane uh, contained uh, budding uh, structure. And we have that uh, in the case of milk. So in milk secretion, uh, we have uh, what we'll call American secretion or really just exocytosis as we saw uh, here, uh, uh, exocytosis to occur uh, and that's how you get protein out in the case of milk. But in fat, in order, uh, fat is not water soluble. In, other words, in, in order to make it water soluble, uh, you actually uh, release part of the uh, cell uh, membrane around it. So the membrane 
uh, cell membrane is discharged, and we call it an apocrine secretion. So where the part of the apical cytoplasm uh, is in the secretion itself, in the milk of fat, in the fat of the milk, uh, then uh, that's called apocrine, and americrine is just regular exocytosis. What happens is the vesicle fuses with it. So normally we have a trilaminar structure, but they actually have five layers here where you get the fusion of these to occur, and then this uh, pops open to discharge uh, to do it. Here we see the trilateral structure in this uh, villi. Uh, and then uh, we have bulk flow, uh, which is one type of transport, but also we can have receptor mediated endocytosis, is another thing. So you can have just bulk flow, whatever's in there gets through, and sometimes it's important, like in blood vessels. But other times uh, you want to take out certain things. So, receptor mediated endocytosis, you have to have receptors to bind to the cargo. And then you have clathrin coated pits. We have these coated pits here, which internalize it, causes the membrane to pinch off uh, uh, a vesicle from that. And then it goes to the lysosome. When it goes to a lower pH, it loses its cargo, uh, and the receptors is, is recycled, as we can see here. So bulk flow, one place you want to bulk flow is this is a, a endothelial cell, the capillary, and you can see the same structure is the same as we have here, where whatever's inside uh, in the serum uh, becomes a discharge uh, out into the uh, connective tissue below. So this is, uh, so this would be endocytosis, where you take it from the lumen, endocytosis and exocytosis uh, located uh, in, in, that, in that category. And so, uh, uh, as I mentioned, uh, you can have uh, receptor mediated ones where you got receptors in the surface, they move to a little cluster, uh, and then uh, they are invaginated and then they become in a vesicle, a coated vesicle, and we can see the kind of coat uh, around the vesicle. So uh, the cargo was going there. Uh, this is a, a bottom of a cell looking at the plasma membrane. Uh, and if we were looking at this structure right in through there, uh, underneath the cell, underneath the cell here, we we're looking that way, this is what we would see. And here's uh, the clathrin, uh, is a three structured protein that forms a kind of wire around it that facilitates pinching off. Uh, of the membrane, so even uh, uh, between the uh, the Golgi and, uh, and and other organelles, uh, in there you have the the clathrin uh, coat, which causes pinching off, uh, pinching off to occur. So the coat occurs, invagination, pinching off, uh, the cargo is then uh, the clathrin is removed and uh, recycled it again. And one of those is a low-density lipoprotein LDL as a way we get rid of cholesterol. So here's cholesterol in here, and here's protein, cholesterol into here, there, uh, and we want to get rid of the cholesterol. So we have receptors for the LDL. So the receptors on the cell surface bind to the LDL, and then the clathrin coat pinches that off, and so you have a coated vesicle. It loses its coat. It fuses with uh, a lysosome, an endosome, uh, and uh, the pH is lowered. Lower pH, it removes its cargo. So the so the uh, LDL goes down to a lysosome, but the but the uh, cell membrane is re the membrane uh, uh, receptors are recycled, so uh, they reappear and you recount them. So you you reuse the uh, the, um, uh, the membrane the receptors, uh, but the cargo goes down to the lysosome to be to be destroyed. So this is a typical one. You, you, your receptor binds to the cargo, moves to the coated pit, pinches off the clathrin. There are mutants uh, cases where uh, the receptor binds to the cargo, uh, to LDL, but it doesn't move to the coated pit, so it's never uh, invaginated. So here we see some coated pits. Uh, even when you go uh, between, this is in the cytosol, uh, when you go between the membranes, this is the Golgi membrane, uh, and to uh, another one, uh, you have the clathrin coat uh, that goes through there, you know, coated there, and then it becomes uncoated. And so here we can see, this is the ER, this is the Golgi apparatus, uh, plasma membrane, 
And so you can have uh, pinching off of the plasma membrane, um, pinching off of the vesicles of the, of the trans face of the Golgi apparatus, forming these uh, endosomes. Um, or you can have the clathrin coat for the secretory vesicles as well. Uh, these lighter grayer ones are a different type of protein, not clathrin, but it's the same, same type of mechanism that you have some kind of coat associated with it. Uh, here we see the clathrin coat uh, as noted by the dots that we see. The dots is amino goal, so where the goal is located is where the antibody bound to the clathrin. And so this is the Golgi apparatus in through here. You can see the nice Golgi, the vesicles pinching off from there. Uh, and so this is a coated vesicle like we have here. And then it loses coat like this or like that. So it loses coat so you don't see these uh, in through there. And this uh, is one and we can show, I uh, want to tell you the insulin receptors do not recycle. In some cases you want them to recycle uh, as we see here for the LDL because we constantly want to remove cholesterol. Uh, but when you do that, uh, you uh, lose a little bit of control of the response of the cell. And we want a lot of response of the cell when we want to get rid of cholesterol. But whenever you want to have a cell to respond to insulin, uh, a more precise um, uh, control uh, is, is necessary. For again, Clathrin pinches off, and then you have uh, uncoated vesicle, coated vesicle, uncoated vesicle located there. Penicytosis is just cell drinking. There's always penicytosis. Phagocytosis is whenever they attach to things. You can see where this neutrophil, with its granules, are going to eat up a, a yeast cell. Um, and they usually have some kind of zippering mechanism that's associated uh, with that. Um, and then you have the uh, pseudopodia will internalize the thing for digestion to occur. Now, uh, ingestion of particles occurs by phagocytic cells and uh, all over the body, in the skin, in the liver, in the stomach, uh, whatever. You have these macrophage-like cells located in the liver, for example. Uh, and they're a mononucleated phagocytic system. Uh, and um, and here we can see where one of those is phagocytizing a couple of yeast things. Uh, and uh, there's also called opsonized particles where you opsonize these things by having antibodies that bind to it. And there's a super mechanism as we talk about. So basically, if this is a particles and you have antibodies that are coated to uh, the particle that or the cell is going to be phagocytized, maybe it's the cancer cells. And then you have a kind of zippering mechanism by receptors on the phagocytic cell binds to uh, the antibodies that are on there. This is opsonized or really preparing for uh, digestion. So here you can see the uh, actin-rich uh, pseudopodia surrounded. So now whatever was up there is going to be in here. There is a zippering mechanism, and you can illustrate that if you take a bead and you put antibodies all the way around it, uh, then the entire bead will be uh, phagocytized, uh, as you see there. However, if you uh, confine your antibodies to only one side, uh, then uh, uh, the cell does not send pseudopodia around it because uh, the kind of zippering is incomplete. It doesn't go all the way around, and so it, uh, the cell won't take it in. Uh, here we see um, at different pHs. Uh, in vesicles, this is a nucleus of a cell, and then uh, this is a cytoplasm showing you uh, varied pHs, uh, the reds or the yellows, uh, indicating uh, uh, lower, lower uh, pH uh, in these uh, uh, secondary lysosomes that we see. So here we see an early endosome, just a vesicle pinching off in there. We may recycle those, bring those back with microtubules, late endosome, get with a secondary lysosome. So Here's a, a primary lysosome is secreted by, uh, is, 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 is transported by the Golgi, uh, and then those vesicles fuse with the late endosome, and now we've got a secondary lysosome located in through here. I mentioned to you before uh, that uh, the main uh, pathway is for secretions to go from the rough ER to the Golgi out to their uh, target, 
but you can recycle vesicles and that requires uh, microtubules to be able to do that. So we can have direct sorting where things at the, at the top or the lateral basal border are, are different, or uh, you can have an indirect system by which you send them both places and then you have certain ones that only go there. Uh, and so that's uh, transcytosis, where you go from one membrane to another membrane. Uh, and so here we see these are uh, microvilli projecting up off the cell, uh, but you can have uh, uh, penicytosis occurring from the latter as well as the apical border uh, uh, fusion with lysosomes and degradation to, uh, to occur. So we have recycling uh, of the receptor, uh, receptors as well as recycling of the membrane, a degradation to occur, or we could have transcytosis where a vesicle is pinched off from one part and is transported to another part. And so basically uh, receptor mediated, uh, cargo binds to the receptor, again then folded uh, a, a coated pit, and then from the coated pit, the coated vesicle uncoats. Uh, lower the pH, re recycle the receptors, and the cargo is that goes down here to the lysosome for degradation to occur. So, uh, as we have uh, nucleomola, rough in the plasma reticulum, the Golgi apparatus, uh, three parts. This is default, where things just get exocytosed in a constitutive matter, or this could be induced by secretory granules, or you can go to the lysosome, as we can see. So here we see the cytosol, and the cytosol is a part of a cytoplasm that was not contained in the uh, nucleus, uh, uh, and it's not contained in organelles. And so from the cytosol, you see mitochondria get its proteins from there, um, the peroxisomes, and then from there you get to the endoplasmic reticulum, and the smoothie R comes from the endoplasmic reticulum, uh, and then you go to the Golgi for lysosome, endosome, secretory granules and the cell surface. So some of them uh, use this pathway in the middle, others uh, do not. So we, here we have the cell, the nucleus, the cytoplasm, uh, the different organelles in their lysosome uh, that we have. Here we see the Santa Elena Canyon, uh, which is on the Mexican uh, and the United States border. Next time we will talk about cytoskeletal components uh, I'm going to totally hear my son climbing up on a uh, windmill. And here we are, that's Mexico over there in the U.S. This is the Rio Grande. There's my son here, me, a while back. They have hot springs down there. We didn't go swimming, but uh, uh, we were there. I just want to thank uh, uh, books uh, that we uh, used to get various pictures out of. A lot of came up from Alberts, uh, Banks, uh, Fawcett. Uh, a host of these uh, uh, books that we use to um, to get educational materials to, to share uh, with our students uh, and I don't want to take credit for any one of these images because uh, they all uh, were those that have appeared in books that I have uh, purchased uh, throughout uh, throughout the years. Uh, thank you and if this information is useful please share it with your friend colleagues um, and tell them about the a YouTube site uh, and how it could be useful for their learning uh, medical histology. Thank you.